That's her, pass the transom. Pass the transom. This is an audio slate for dive H2024. UTC time is 17.24.40, mark. All stations, that's uh, Hurricane Atlanta, clear of uh, Nautilus. Copy. Yeah, no, thanks for reaching out. SPL check, SPL check. One, two. Awesome, thanks. Just a reminder to those folks that are on V-Link, we are on SPL right now, and the, uh, we will be clear of 50 meters in a moment.
copy. Uh, control deck, all stop five zero. All stop five zero. Yeah, you have control. Copy. That's not a healthy meal. Whoever is on V-Link, if you wouldn't mind hitting mute, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. We hear keyboards. Thank you.
I get the reference. One of the really uh, cool things uh, we're doing with the 3D models is uh, kind of like the real estate 3D models you see. You can, uh, as Jonathan rotates the model around there, you can pick any one of those points and the still, the high mm. quality still comes up. Nice. I think that's going to be huge for uh, uh, whoever the outreach lead is they have to go through hundreds and hundreds of still pictures and find good ones and uh, especially if we're you know taking a lot of pictures like thousands on a dive it's a very tedious task looking at them one at a time but with the 3d model you can then rotate it around and pick one that the angle that would be right yeah like you. ooh, this one's gonna look nice on the coral for example and you can then all the ones we took around the coral you can click on those individual points and uh, see the picture as he's as he's doing now. So yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it'll it'll make um, our processing of the still images uh, for outreach a lot more enjoyable of an experience. Plus, we'll be able to cherry pick all the all the sweet pictures. Yeah, because that and that tends to backlog too, right? If the SCFs are busy with a lot of outreaches, which they usually are, and then uh, often they get you know different people to train process all those images and it's going to be a huge huge time saver i might even volunteer to do yeah, it hey. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if you get to play with the 3d model i'm sure yeah yeah who doesn't like to play with the 3d model in you wow. some serious mouse clicking although they both jonathan and chris make me dizzy they're constantly rotating <laughs> oh yeah that's me with my maps too so yeah, it's yeah, a, you and Flader Ma Mouse, too. <laughs> it's an affliction that we all have. <laughs> I do the same thing when I'm modeling yeah. um, a design. I look at, constantly look at it from all the different angles. To I find it's great when I'm doing it, but when I have to watch someone else do it, it's nauseating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I stop? I didn't stop. Where am I? I'm six meters above you, but uh, what's happening is I have my auto head on, so I, I can. Uh, I'm a little bit closer to you than I should be. What? Put a little more forward jam on here. No, I don't have my tail line on. Uh, yeah, I do. Wow. You can see in your. The tether goes up, and the mine it goes up, but I can barely see you. And so you're at a positive delta. Only five meters. Oh, okay. But I mean, not net. You're not above. You must be. I'm below. You're yeah. below. Yeah, yeah. But I'm closer to you than I should be. I'm Roger. Twenty some meters. I should be. I pull on you a little harder. So your heading has changed. The mine is as the. Yeah, yeah. Vehicles swing around in the current. They're weather baiting. No, good eye, good eye. Yeah, it's all good. If that goes on too long, uh, 
next thing you know, they're bumping each other and our tether looks like a 1985 phone cord. Yeah. And it's happened while I'm sitting here talking about 3D models. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll, I'll, I'll ease off my verts there. I tend to uh, do the minimal vert so I can... Robert. <sighs> Robert lives dangerously. He uses Z-Bias. So it's a trim. Drives you into the seafloor. <laughs> yeah, it drives you into the seafloor when we, so we come in and change seats and I'm used to, I click a button and then I have control of the vehicle. <coughs> uh, he does it with two, so he has to click two buttons and he, sometimes we miss one of them and the vehicle keeps descending and slams into the seafloor. One knot. Walking speed, but still, it's embarrassing. <coughs> I'm assuming we're doing an orbit run here. Yeah, you will have to slow down a little, Ram. Yeah. yeah, but I don't have K2 yet. I think we get a little early on our launch, and I don't know if he's around yet. Um, well, in theory, if you've read the SOP, you just click a couple start buttons, and away you go. Change uh, the dive numbers. and. Yeah, I can do all that we want, but I think he'd rather be driving. It would be a good trial run. Yeah, I've done it before. Um, and we can always just start with the photogrammetry if uh, we have to locate the wreck first. <laughs> oh. And we need a map first to know where we're going. I guess yeah. we're just going to have to go old, old school. It was hugely helpful in planning our vessel moves to enable the cinematography that we captured yesterday. Da, 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 da. I know you want the baby, not the labor. Come on, just waiting. It's part of part of the process. It's okay. I'm very patient while I just wait. Dave's for on day. video. Dave's on video. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Good morning, Dave. Morning, all. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Welcome to the Jonathan, Dan, and Rachel show. A Dave. delicate blend Bye, of rubbish. art and science. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Copyright that. Uh, Actually, um, that's really good. Plagiarizing that from Third Rock Radio. Oh. America, ah. America's radio station. Yes, I've heard it. <coughs> well. Dave, you got a fidget up there? A little fidget spinner? Two or three or four. <laughs> <laughs> they keep growing. Welcome to our Third Rock. From My uh, children, before they were teenagers, when Dad was still cool, um... When was that? A long, long time ago. <laughs> Seems like yesterday, though. Aww. We bought our second 3D printer. It was a, like a score on Craigslist, one of the minis. And I set it up for them and got them Tinkercad accounts, which is an online uh, 3D CAD drawing program that's free. And um, they had a fidget spinner fascination, so they soon became... Uh, they were able to design and print and manufacture their own fidget spinners and within a matter of weeks we had a solid bowl on the kitchen table full of fidget spinners. That is awesome. Did they start selling them at school? Uh, they were trading them with their friends. Yeah. And they had, uh, yeah, we have, a, you don't have to go far in our house to find fidget spinners. We're all somewhere on the spectrum and it, uh, Passes the time. You guys remember trading pogs during school? Pogs? Were, were pogs a thing? Slammers? And remember it was like these stacks of discs that you would... No? Maybe it was a no. Thing. no. I don't remember a pog. I remember those, Jonathan. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I got pog originated. I, I, I did not have Hawaii. them, but I remember them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were second wave pog. Yeah. The first wave pog was probably 30 years prior or something. Yeah. It originated here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I remember I had this collection of sweet slammers. Oh. That and Tamagotchi, man. Those are the only things you really did back in, in my day. In my day, man. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. 
What year were you born, Jonathan? 84. Really? Yep. Oh. 84, baby. I've got 10 on you. You got 10? Yeah. I feel like every single day I'm here, I just age another year. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is worse than my first year of having twins. Hmm. How old are your about twins now? About the same, it's about the same amount of sleep I got, that's for sure. Uh, my twins are four. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful age. It is. It's absolutely perfect, and I'm soaking it in. Everyone everyone else is like, oh, get it in now before they're 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Four. Enjoy them while they're young and cute. They turn into surly teenagers. Oh, totally. No, I can't. It's not <laughs> good. That's when I usually get them is their middle school age. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> at the end of the day, goodbye. have a great rest of your day as you go home to mom and dad. <laughs> Take that same personality with you. Enjoy. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. My wife was a special ed teacher's aide in middle school. I don't know why. I don't know how she survived that. It's a, it's a, it's a, dis a love. You have to have a love and a deep it's passion to get up every single morning and keep coming back to it. It's a gift. I'm telling you. I, I, somehow she made it through. I don't know. I don't know how she did it sometimes, but it was just an extension of being a mom. Oh, for sure. And we have four kids. So. For sure. My, my highest compliment in the classroom is when one of the kids accidentally messes up and says, Mom, and that lets me know right there I'm doing something right. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a balance now between do I help my kids be as independent as possible mm -hmm. or cause, and it's not an or of course but no. or do, do I just hug them and just and. make them fully dependent on me I know it I, know I want it. the love but I also don't want the super independent 12 year old right but I do want that it's, right it's a thing it's a balance for sure my daughter already I, I see my future of trying to teach her to drive Oh, we were out there. The um, most stressful part of I don't parenting even, no, for myself. It's not good. Yeah. Yeah. I was out there trying to teach her. She's 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 learning, you know, on her bicycle. It's got the training wheels, and she goes, and and I'm like, okay, honey, you know, just just kind of try to balance in the middle. She's like, Dad, <laughs> no. And she'll go taken off, and then she'll dr run straight into the bushes. Yep. And she'll be crying, and she'll yep. be like, Dad, why didn't you help me? And that's it. I was like, I tried, but what am I supposed to do? You know, sometimes you got to let them go straight into the bushes. Well, that's true. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are we going? What are we doing? Uh, we're expecting 836 meters depth. We're landing uh, just around here. This is our target point. Well, you just let me free fall there. That's where, that's where we're going. Yeah, we're going to start safely far away. We're yeah. about 75 meters, and then we'll approach again. Yeah. If Chris has oh. Norbit up in time, then we'll maybe do a spin. Okay. Yeah. We're scheduled we're for an approximate five hour dive today as we're going to be looking at the Scuttle Japanese submarine uh, from, let's see, this was 1945, 46 that it was sunk. It's been 14 years since this has been viewed. As per usual, we're going to come in uh, about 50 meters from from the wreck, do our nor Norbit survey. That's a challenging word to say for me, Norbit. Well, we're now calling it the, the K2 High Resolution Mapping Survey. K2 
high resolution All mapping right. survey. The reason we're doing that is uh, Norbit is actually just the sonar. And um, Norbiting, although K2 lovingly does say that it's Norbiting, the reality is uh, Chris's is contribution is and, and K Chris? K2, yeah, Chris, Chris Krasnovsky, we call him K2. K, K two K times. K2. K Chris. Chris. Chris Krasnovsky. Oh, I love it. So, so it's not in orbiting. We really are conducting a K2 high resolution multi beam scan. Perfect. Because uh, all of that real time visualization, the voxels, the capacity to turn that around into a real time, near real time map. Um, that can be used for, for comprehensive navigation is, is all the work, um, the, the suite of coding um, that is interpreting the, the data feeds coming back from the Norbit itself, which is the physical uh, multi-beam, um, and, and translating it to an operational tool here for, for ROV Hercules and our exploration dives. Only only Chris Krasnovsky is allowed to now refer to it as Norbiting. Got it. Got it. So that scan's going to allow us to identify any hazards that could be in the water column uh, and then just give us an, uh, a better view of how the wreck is positioned. And then we can determine the best way to come in on the angle yep. with Hercules to develop that. Yep, absolutely. And then once we get that scan done, we're going to move in and start working on the photogrammetry survey. Um, let me just say that the images that you have come up with from yesterday and developed are phenomenal. Yeah, we can't share those, or we can't wait to share those uh, with the world. The process of putting together the number of images that we created last night. Um, we acquired approximately 7,000 images over a period of four hours. Um, it's from two different cameras on ROV Hercules. Um, the process of refining the models maybe took um, probably about three hours or so. Yeah. Um, and uh, then it creates what's called a, a sparse point cloud after the alignment. Um, and that sparse point cloud allows a uh, quick interpretation of what the data is. And um, then uh, after that is the process of actually aligning the images. And, um, and uh, oh, look at that. Interesting. I got another 50 images out of that. So this is a program that's running through all of the images or do you have to physically go in there and align them? Um, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, uh, it's a program that's uh, that um, interprets uh, the number, the, each one of the images is taken in a series. So we'll uh, go from one section to the other section. And if you were here for yesterday's dive, um, you'll have heard me uh, asking for uh, the ROV team to move systematically across the survey. So like, hey, I'd love to get this one line down the stern of the ship. Um, 
and that's so that the model between the two different cameras can um, calculate the distance, the change, the warping of objects moving closer and away from the vehicle. And it's through that kind of warping, um, it's called parallax, the difference between two different points of view, um, in this case, two different images, uh, that allows us to, or allows the model to actually calculate um, distance. Or I'm sorry, calculate the 3D uh, nature of, of the model itself. I don't do a great job, actually. I'm trying to actually uh, manipulate and work with some data right now at the same time I'm talking. And I'm not a very good multitasker. Um, oh, it's, it's incredible. Eh, there we go. Should be close to approaching.
Mark 27. Training Torpedo. Oh yeah, look at that. That's so cool. Yeah, totally. The Mark 27 tor training torpedo. Well, torpedo, but that one was probably a training one because of the yellow. Mm -hmm. Do you guys see that? Yeah, I'm still unsure. We'll get a few more pings on it. Uh, what direction is the, the, the uh, sub supposed to be from our landing point, Johan? Okay, great. So it looks like we probably have eyes on it. So we're underway with our K2 high resolution multi beam scan. Going to take a good look of. Uh, ah, that's for Chris right there. Right? Yeah, no, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah, sweet. Just kind of taking a map of the area right now, making sure that we're identifying any hazards that could be in the water column, making sure that we've got a good look. Uh, at where this wreck is so that we can determine which points we want to come in. Switch over to the photogrammetry survey. We are diving today on the Imperial Japanese Navy submarine, the I-401. It's one of their largest vessels that they had. Would you call it a vessel if it's still a submarine? Is it the same as a vessel? It's probably fair. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think submarine's probably the, the the proper way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No harm, no foul, though. No. So this submarine was, uh, like I said, one of their largest. Um, and built to carry three large bomber aircraft, which I think is just quite impressive. Could stay at about 120 days out at sea, and those planes had a travel radius of 34,000 miles. Wow. Yeah. But time to build and cost to build uh, only had it active for about a year before they decided to discontinue. Devin, yesterday the I-201 was a submarine that was surrendered 
by the Japanese to the U.S. in Japan. Do you know the the lineage of today's? Yes, so this one was actually surrendered um, in a surrendering ceremony that the Japanese uh, surrendered to the United States, and then we transported it back to Pearl Harbor. Oh, so same same situation same as Same situation, so, yes, okay. yes. It looks like launched in on March 11th, 1944, in Japan. And sounds like somebody from, yeah. Yeah, we, we hear you. Uh, just stand by. Yeah, go right ahead. Yep. Oh, come on. What is this invalid and incorrupt? What do you mean? Yeah, I, I agree. Let's let's norbit the whole thing. Pete, it sounds like, are we getting somebody from shore that wants? Oh, are, are they piped in though to SPL? I'm not hearing SPL. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hearing anyone else. I mean, I'm hearing our team, but not the shore side folks. Yeah. No. Negative. Uh, stand by. No, you're not. This is not north up. Let me switch it to north up for you. That's north up. Oh, come on. Killing me, Hoss. There we go. Rennie's working on a on a map for you to navigate on. This is the start of our dive 2024, the last of this expedition. We have one more today scheduled. Are we going to be relocating? Or is just the five hour dive today? We, uh, sorry, I had the pilots on too in my other ear. Sorry. Uh, it's all good. No, this is good. The, your question was, is this the last dive of the yeah. Season. Is this? Are we relocating at any point today, or we, this? We is are it? okay. So this is the last for us O and R sponsored dive of the season. Okay. So we'll. Uh, we'll Thank you. We'll wrap it up today with this exploration and imaging of the I four zero one, and then we have kind of a maintenance mission. Right. Later today, uh, you can imagine we use a steel a cable that's comprised of a fiber optic cable and uh, a copper conductor and a Kevlar um, strength member, but then its its outer layer is this protective steel winding. And you've, you've maybe seen a steel cable that looks like this from the surface or right. its exterior, like uh, swing sets and playgrounds and like kind of uses around the house or whatever. But this is uh, the diameter. This is 0.68 inches. And, uh, and if we're going to, this is the end of the season, the last time we're going to use the winch, you can imagine if this thing is coated in salt water and then wrapped up on this drum with no preventative maintenance, it's going to rust and become unusable very quickly. Right. So this afternoon, uh, after we're done here, we're going to go out to deeper water and we have this special tool that squirts grease all the way into all of those layers. And then we're going to freshwater rinse it as we put it back on the drum. And that's the best we could do to properly maintain the wire on the winch. And so that's our kind of closeout activity. We can't pull in unless we do, yeah, <laughs> do this because yeah, we'll ruin the... But as far as dives go, this is, this is, this is it. That one's, the maintenance dive is going to be just at Atlanta, so no Hercules. And it's going to be, you know, basically down as quickly as they can grease and then up efficiently as they can. And that'll be, that'll be it. And that counts as a dive, but it won't be, uh, the watch won't be stood up. The, right. won't, the cameras won't be kind of monitored. 
we might have a, a grease cam in the in the bay or something <laughs> but other than that i don't so we're excited to be here with all of you and have you participating along with us thank you for joining us my name is Devin. I'm your science communication fellow aboard the Nautilus with my last day on watch, most likely, yeah. Yeah. One more sleep. One more sleep, and then back to reality. Back to the classroom, sixth grade science teacher in Clarksville, Tennessee. Looking forward to getting back to my kiddos. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of work to get back to, but it's been well worth it. Yeah. Why aren't these automatically generating the... Christian, you want to chime in? Say good morning this morning? Sure. So How are you this morning? I'm Up doing, early? Yeah, doing well. Um, yeah, this is our last dive. Uh, it's been a great time to be here in the data logger position. Um, it's been really fun to meet everyone and learn how the Nautilus uh, operates. And I think we had a, a great... Um, impact on our internship program this year. Very excited about that. Our applications. Single-handedly. Yes, all by myself. Yeah, no, you did. <laughs> the whole you team did the plugs. Board. The plugs. <laughs> the whole team, though, was really actually doing it, too. The SEFs were talking about it during all the interactions as well. So it was really good. Um, so that that was a, a fun time. And yeah, I, I'm sad to, to leave the Nautilus. Next year, if you uh, want to turn your advertising budget for the interns into <laughs> ship days, just let me know, okay. and we'll figure out something epic to right. do together. Uh, I will keep that in mind for next year. It could be good. Yeah, I like a hype it, event, you know? Yeah, like a, exactly. Yeah, be cool. well, just remember that we're a duo, so include oh, me right. in your okay. budget. Okay, okay. <laughs> Devin, I'll, I'll write you in. I'll write you into the proposal. Yes. <laughs> the 8 to 12 watch is a mandatory <laughs> Eight Mandatory discussions of eDNA and, and Marines know. There we go. <laughs> it's been a little uh, little choppy this morning. I heard I saw you headed up to do some yoga on the monkey deck. Did that did that work out well for you? It worked out okay. Yeah, it was actually kind of windy up there. That was and then the yoga mat was actually blowing around. It was it was pretty windy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely mm -hmm. feeling a little bit of an uptick in the in the surf today. Yeah, and it was cloudy up. It's cloudy out there, or before we came in, it was cloudy anyway. Yeah. Hope the sun comes out. Pete, I'm just starting to hear something from, uh, sounds like from ashore. All right. We're, for the folks, uh, the scientists participating ashore, we're troubleshooting getting your audio into SPL and here in the van. So uh, stand by. Thank you for your patience. Shipboard internet really isn't made for modeling cloud-based. <laughs> uh, Are you Starlink? Starlinking? Um, no, I'm, I'm. This is on the internet the VSAT. network, so I'm I'm VSATing. Send to again. A tabular record of move. Devin, we saw some reports of orcas. Listen, you know where I'm going to be as soon as this is over. <laughs> I'm breaking out the binoculars. I'm headed out to look for orcas. Oh, the, the there's, whale, there's the whale been a report? spotting. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, been a spotting. Good. Make sure to pass the word if you're if you have any. Oh, yeah. you will hear me. <laughs> there's no doubt about that. <laughs> Orca. All right, so uh, update on the actual task at hand. Um, we have uh, really? arrived within, Fiddle arrived space. to the bottom close enough to conduct uh, a multi-beam survey with a multi-beam mounted on the ROV. The first pass of that survey yielded what looks to be a large cylindrical target, highly likely to be uh, the I-401. And so we've planned, it. I know the satellite feed looks like blue water, but there's um, a lot of mapping activity going on uh, that we're not sharing on the satellite. And so we're, we're going to make a pass down the I-401 on the side that we haven't insonified yet to get a full picture of the submarine. This is going to help Jonathan plan um, 
how he wants to begin the imagery collection, but then also may be helpful in hazards, like lines in the water column and that sort of thing. Certain lines really show up, others don't, so we're also going to be really careful on the first visual approach. But uh, that is what is going on. So unlike yesterday where the 8 to 12 watch section was led by their expedition leader flailing around trying to find the coordinates and get us on task, we we seem to have nailed it today. Nailed it today, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. And our, it was our plan to land a safe distance away and then kind of approach. And so the Norbit with its uh, kind of 100 meter um, radius of its uh, ability to spot these sorts of targets was key today in allowing us to drop safely to the bottom, but then also see the sub and know that we had found what we were looking for. So kudos to K2 again. Interesting uh, snippet here as I'm reading about the 401. It is a hangar aircraft, right? So it's designed to, to carry a couple of uh, airplanes launched from the submarine and three of them yeah and it says where did I just lost it a crew of four personnel could prepare the aircraft in a trained crew of four personnel could prepare the aircraft in seven minutes So, which is, you know, it, you imagine is remarkable for being able to surface. Yes. You know, a few minutes to surface, they open the hatch, the aircraft's repaired, it's launched, and then the submarine is back it's underwater and invisible. It's an incredible, it's like incredible. Scary if you're the, I, yeah. I, I almost, w I wonder if there's video of that, if there's any way that we could find video of that process actually taking place, because I just. I'll uh, keep looking. I just think that is. So interesting. And then you were describing they must have been like seaplanes because they wouldn't have had a large area to take off on. Yeah, so got it big makes pontoons, sense. So yeah. They would launch from the water. Yeah. Incredible. It's it just speaks to the innovation too. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean there's I know it at the in World War Two we were adversaries, but you can still appreciate the ingenuity Absolutely. that went into something like this and and we saw it yesterday, we talked a little bit about this uh, the declassified assessment during the classified assessment during the war of the technologies on these Japanese submarines and what the US could rapidly learn to maintain an advantage. And um, and you you saw in that report the appreciation of, or the innovation coming through with the <coughs> the tone of the this US Navy captain who was the author of that report. So part of this uh, part of this dive and the mission for us is to uh, explore the deterioration process and looking how these vessels are are faring. I'll, uh, uh, so I'll ask you, Devin. Oh. I agree with you that that is our mission. What did you think about yesterday after watching, seeing the photos prior to, and then watching the video and our exploration? Did you think the sub had Roger. deteriorated significantly? Yeah. Or so what? looking at what with the images that we've had from before over the 14 years, it looks like it's gonna hold up for quite a while. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't tell any immeasurable kind of deterioration myself. No, yeah. no, was I was surprised um, at, I'll call it the lack of, I thought I was anticipating a lot more uh, of an ecosystem around there. There were oh. quite, still quite a few. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot going on, but uh, I don't know, I in, in my head I had an anticipated seeing 
um, a, lo a lot more. But I know that we do use the special coatings. I know when ships go down and, and, and they're sunken on purpose, um, that kind of prohibits life from yeah. growing at a rapid rate at least. I noticed on, on the stern, uh, or oh, at least one of the broken ends of the sub, I remember kind of a, you could almost see a stain on the seafloor of where the bacterial mat had started to grow, influenced by something that was leaching off of the submarine. It was right. interesting. You know, we weren't in a position to take samples and kind of do that sort of investigation. But one of the OECI uh, contributors, PIs, pr principal investigators, Layla Hamden down at the University of Southern Mississippi, has an active project looking at shipwrecks in the Gulf of Mexico mm -hmm. and the hazard of leaching chemicals that are in ships that have sunk and the microbial kind of communities that are around. Yeah. We, saw, we saw a little bit of that yesterday. I know great care has to be taken to remove uh, all contaminants um, as much as possible for any sunken vessel of any kind um, to protect the, the waters and the, the wildlife around it. So. I hey, know that uh, they can back turn row, I got, a, I got a question down here in the data lab. Sure. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Is, do we know if this sub is in, intact or is it in multiple pieces like the last one? Uh, let, me, let me look through it. I think the only one that was noted to be in multiple pieces was yesterday's, but I'll confirm. Okay. Good question. Uh, looks like main body is sitting upright. Hangar bay is missing. Conning tower remains in good condition, although stripped. So. All right, thanks, Jason. Yeah, I'm looking for if that hangar bay is. Oh, here it is. Uh, the hangar bay peeled away from the submarine during sinking. It landed face down, its door end broke in half with about 40 feet still sticking up from the seabed. The remainder the remainder lays on, among the debris field. So you should see two big targets, Chris. Okay, yeah, so I'm just trying to determine how far we should back up for to start our survey. Uh, I'll see if there's a note, like a range and bearing to the hangar bay versus the... Oh, it's they kind of know where it is. You know where it is, or, or are you asking me? No, I'm asking you. Oh, uh, it, well, it said it it peeled away upon sinking during the scuttling of the sub, so, uh, but I, I'm looking for a little bit more information. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I think it's, in terms of our survey, I don't think it's gonna change anything at this for this first pass, so. I've had have, I've had several people in our in our comment section say that um, this one as well has, a, has been broken off the bow. That's possible for sure. Yeah, there is the hurl report is in three sections: main body, bow, and uh, the hangar bay. Oh yeah, here we go. I'm, now I'm catching up. Thank you. The internet is much faster than Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez Louise! Submarine is in two pieces, separated by a 300 meter debris field. Chris, that might be your uh, trigger there. 300 meters. Bow section is severed just aft of the catapult ramp. Nearby, a 25 millimeter triple anti-aircraft gun stands upright in the debris field. All right, so three tar three big targets for this one. And uh, Jason, just a heads up, the, um, the shore side connection is currently down. We're working on restoring it. So okay. uh, folks at home that are on the shore connection uh, we're working on it, and uh, hopefully we'll have it up soon. Thanks for the update, Pete. So yes, that is uh, someone asking about the uh, the V on satellite feed one that they're looking at that uh, is a green 
uh, laser that you're seeing that Hercules has on it. It helps for measuring. In this case, we'll use it to cut away any lines that might be in our way. <laughs> It'll just be shaving off all the hazards in front of us. No, very low powered, but it's a scaling laser. I think it's 10 centimeters apart. Is that right, Devin? I believe yeah, so, yes. 10 centimeters apart. So Excellent for measuring species when they swim in front of us and give us a good, good view of how large something may be and also for when we're diving on rocks like this. Yeah, Johan, that line looks really good. I see what you, I see your uh, nav G plotting. Yeah, so this sub is actually, looks like it's a little taller. 25 meters might actually be better, Bob. Devin, I've got a little bit on the uh, aircraft that flew from the I-400 and the I-401, the yeah. two submarines that were capable. So uh, it looks like there's only one surviving example right, here we are. of the M6A aircraft. They were uh, never used in combat. Their first mission was to destroy these locks of the Panama Canal to cut off the American supply routes. and. Yeah. Uh, the I-400 and 401 on the 23rd of July had six of these aboard, three each, painted with U.S. markings. Oh. But the Japanese surrendered before the attack could take place. The aircraft that were on board were destroyed to prevent capture. And so this, is, this one aircraft was uh, flown out of Yokosuka, Japan, uh, and then sat outside. It was it was uh, acquired by the Smithsonian and sat outside since 1960 with a restoration that began in 1989, finished in 2000, and now is on display at the National Air and Space Museum just outside of Dulles Airport. Nice. Which is cool. So if folks wanted to find out more, maybe check out the... Uh, and does it indeed have the pontoons? It does, yeah. Ow. The restoration has the pontoons and everything. Oh, look at that. That's yeah, impressive. So oh. Able to be used as a torpedo bomber or a uh, dive bomber. Did you Google that? Pretty wild. So if, if someone were to Google the M6A aircraft? Yeah, the official, the, the, the name was, and, and I'm not going to nail this, uh, pronunciation, but it's spelled S E I R A N, was the name of the aircraft. It's Siran uh, M6A. Yeah. And uh, it translated to Clear Sky Storm was the Clear Sky Storm. Yeah. Very cool. Sure. Yeah. You don't hear a lot of military stories of the other side no. painting their flags to look. You don't hear about that a lot, so that's interesting. Yeah. Quite an impressive tactic to think that someone looking from 
from the ground up, that's what they would see would be the the U.S. flags there. Were we able to get any connections with our our people on shore? Not yet. We're still working. Not on yet. It. Okay. They're letting me know. They have a site map. Yeah, I'm ready down here. Yeah, this altitude looks looks good, yeah. <laughs> 447. I love it. What was the altitude we were shooting for? Hmm? All right, here we go. No flight. Would you like the code? <laughs> you may have it, it's open source. Yes, someone just reminded me, not only is it National Red Mitten Day, but today is also National Donut Day. I didn't even make it down to breakfast. Were there donuts? I don't know. I didn't know. make it down to breakfast. <laughs> I'm going to regret that in about one hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they used to do table bacon. They used to take the bacon and they would just like leave it out along with the toast oh. <laughs> for people that missed breakfast, but I haven't seen the table bacon. So what happens to the table bacon? Well, I don't know. Either everyone just eats all the bacon. Just, <laughs> I mean, Robert, right? Like, last what year there was... Robert, there was, right. <laughs> no, Robert, Robert, did you was, eat all the was, bacon? I didn't eat all the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he reacted so strongly to that. Yeah. that <laughs> oh, makes you wonder. I don't know. The ROV I've team, you guys... Much bacon, but... <laughs> you guys planned better than the back row today. You guys all got... Uh, switched out Swapped with your out, yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> Did you see any donuts down there, Robert? Hey, Bob. Uh, no we donuts. Have, we're getting, I'm seeing some <clears throat> oscillations in Z. Have you changed the gains since last time? In Z? In Z, yes. Uh, I haven't changed any of the gains. Okay, maybe it's just we're getting started. Yeah. Hmm. Uh -huh. In my last job, we called it show bacon. Show bacon. Oh, show, show bacon. bacon. Okay. So it was, uh, you know, it was like the the Kickstarter to the day. Yeah. And I mean, that, agreed. It was that thick cut stuff. Oh. oh. So good. Atlanta on the move. I think we would have all been a little healthier if the ship only stocked like the ship just didn't stock any bacon. Man, we've had a variety. We've had tofu. We've got the fish, the grilled fish that's going to the lentils. I am really the impressed couscous. with the crew. It's that just been so much out there for us to choose from. It's been fabulous. It's hard to leave the French fries, though. Oh, yeah. and the onion rings. And they're perfect, too. Uh -huh. They're crispy. They're they not really like, soggy. He's got the perfect I don't touch understand. of cooking them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's enough. We do have a long shift before so we get to lunch. I am so hungry right now. <laughs> this isn't good. <laughs> Well, we didn't need food out here, Robert. What? We're not as we we're not as organized as you. Huh. Y'all giving each other crisp high fives and going and eating bacon. I'm just sitting here calibrating cameras. I forgot everything. Uh. <laughs> All right, Bob. It looks like everything is stabilized. It's uh, okay. The depth is looking good. Thanks. All right. I got a protein shake over here for you, Jonathan. If you hit rock bottom. Okay. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
someone wrote in to let us know that uh, in Japanese, if you were to transfer that name over uh, for the submarine, it actually would say missed on a fair day. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of like what we had going on outside this morning. Time. It was misty. Yeah. It was cloudy. We had some, looks like some rain all around us. Yeah. That's a good thing. They have fires over there on the island. Yeah, they, they definitely need as much help as they can get. And Kristen, you were sharing that you were actually able to see those uh, flames from, from the ship last night. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was, uh, it was kind of... Not flames on the ship. Yeah, be I clear. believe there's a <laughs> forest fire going on over on, on the island. Yeah, and you could definitely see the, um, the fire from the ship. And you could see, I grabbed the binoculars, you could see flames. And we could wow. all smell smoke all, uh, you know, yesterday evening, so... Yeah. I'm sure that's got to be tough to see again for oh, I can't folks imagine. in the area. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Again, which one is the city? Benny's one swatching on satellite feed three of just um, this. These are 2,246 uh, images that I just put into the program we're using to create 3D models called reality capture. Um, I started an alignment uh, in the background here, and uh, while I while I step away, I'll leave this up on satellite feed three because you should see the alignment complete and uh, some of the first components. So uh, what it calculated as the, the 3D models based off of the sequence of images that we input, should see those components uh, start to flow through as the calibration completes. Um, and what I'll do with those components, these are all from uh, the port camera. The port camera is the one on the left-hand side on satellite feed one, one of the two stereo 180-degree fisheye lenses. Um, so I'm just inputting one camera's worth of data. We'll process that out, um, and I'll export those components and then merge them with uh, components from the cinema camera, which is the camera that's mounted on the bumper bar of ROV Hercules. So between those two viewpoints, those th two 3D reconstructions of different angles of the same rack, you're able to... to kind of coalesce them into a very high fidelity, um, highly accurate model of what we saw. Do you have the chat? Up? It's always a fun moment when you're waiting like this because you don't know what you're going to get. Um, there should be a, a the chat header. Another element about doing this type of modeling is um, it's a fun edge case for um, why or other utilities between very uh, high powered desktop computers. Um, using just every available um, every available compute cycle from this, running at about five gigahertz. Oh, turn that down a little bit. Ooh, that's good. It's pretty low. Yeah. There's the bow. Do you know what that came up?
and we are working to restore connection to shore where we do hope to have some historians joining us. No, fiddlesticks. <sighs> All right, fine, just save it. Goodness gracious, come on. here. Hmm. Yeah, Pete, what are you thinking? What's the V-Link status? We're just getting uh, just no drama, but curious questions on the, the chat. Yeah, DE. Uh, our data engineering team is uh, feverishly working at it, so okay. uh, nothing new at the moment, but I will update you as soon as I hear different. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's a problem child alignment. Hmm. The plot thickens to a thin soup. So Jonathan, if you find, is it just one image that's setting this on a bad course? And if you correct that initial one, does it? Bridge, go for nav. Does it re-snap to what you're? Yeah, so if you're looking, I'm still out, right? Is that yep. feed three? Yeah. yeah. So if you're looking out at sat feed three right now, you can see. Background, how long do we expect this submarine to be? Uh, stand by. It was 300, right? Something it's like that. 400 feet long overall, but we know that it's been broken into to two. Yeah, so this target, the main body target described as 300 feet, the bow section 80 feet, and the aircraft hangar uh, Length isn't. Oh, sorry, that's the guns and the hangar bay itself, uh, 115 feet. So 380, 115 for the three different targets. Feet.
tell me to slow down or speed up. What do I need to do? Speed up? I need to slow down. Yeah, so how do you troubleshoot, Jonathan, your uh, misalignment? Sure, so you can see in this viewpoint, um, this is a misalignment. It's a little bit of the ghost in the shell here. Um, and that's caused by this camera run where we were fairly low down. There wasn't quite enough overlap with um, any of these top images. And so Reality Capture didn't really know what to do with that, and so it throws it into something else that's fantasy. Um, so the process of aligning them, though, is, is fairly simple. So what I'm doing is I'm actually looking around in the images right now. You're um, going to force it. Yeah, you have to you have to tell it what where the tie points are, and those tie points are for this bow section. There's I'm noticing that there's images here. Uh, there they that both have the propeller. You see a little ghostly propeller right there yep. in the sparse uh, component cloud, and then that is also yeah over here. So you can see that there's that uh, propeller. So. What that tells us is that um, that's a good point, that propeller, uh, to help unify those two elements of the model. And um, if I click on the individual elements here, I'm sorry, these are these uh, these rectangles represent the image that was taken that helped create this reality, this 3D model here. So in this instance, these two photos. Um, on the right-hand side were from the misalignment over here. Okay. And then this photo right here was from this component. And so the process here is just going to be that um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a... Uh, I'm going to take a ground control point on image 2D here, add control points. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to say, I want to use, hmm, that's a good spot. Let's see, I'm actually going to have to, let's go to one. Uh, find something that's a little bit more. There we go. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, so VLink is back up. Uh, so folks from shore, um, go ahead and log back in if you wouldn't mind. And you're free to talk on SPL as you desire. Thank you. I can hear you. Your yes. volume is pretty low. Do we think that there's maybe more targets along this path? That sort of looks like it's broken off there. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like there's more bits somewhere. Okay, so we, uh, I think maybe we should continue along this path. I don't know, I don't have... Anyway, do your ship move, and then we'll, or the ship heading change, or whatever, and then we'll, uh, yeah, go from Oops. there. What's the plan? What are we doing? Uh, Hey, uh, back row, this is the data lab. Roger. Yes. <laughs> uh, do we, do we want to continue surveying along this route? It looks like there's still parts of the ship missing. So, uh, yeah, do we have any idea of, like, targets, orientation or anything that we maybe want to keep looking for? Not that I'm aware of, uh, Kristen, target orientation. 
Sorry, I don't know who that was for, uh, Chris. Yeah, Jason stepped away for just a second. He's right behind us. Okay. So are we going to go up the other side? Is that the plan? Uh, yeah, the ship uh, needed to make some heading changes, so we're paused once uh, Atalanta and her catch up, and then uh, we're waiting to see where the other sections of the submarine are before we continue. Oh, that's a good one. Hey, Johan, Chris, I'm back. Sorry about stepping away for a second. No worries. Hey, what's, Jason. Yeah, what's the question? Yeah, it, so it looks like this is not the entire ship. Uh, are there? Do we have any hints on where the other parts might be, or should we just continue along this line? Uh, we don't. So I, I think we can set like some reasonable time limit for our excursions to find the others. And then if if we can, great, a quick image of those. If not, we return to this element and we start our photogrammetry because we have a shorter dive today. So I don't want to okay. spend a bunch of time searching oh. and miss out on the, you know, the imagery. Okay, yeah, so Rennie suggests that we do the other side uh, and then just come down on this. And then if we have time, we'll search further. Yeah, that sounds good to me too. That'll give us, that'll help us look a little further out if the, cause her, oh. What we'll do is we'll have Hercules Getting turn 90 degrees to the right. having a difficult time. Turn to the right. Uh, we'll get a we'll get a pass that'll look 100 meters uh, further along track. Maybe we'll see something. Maybe we won't. And then we'll do another 90 degree turn and do a pass down the other side of the ship. Okay. Next Great. time, Chris, you can just call and say that Rennie told me that we're doing this, and that'll be totally fine. <laughs> Affirmative. <laughs> All right, it looks like Atalanta is settling here. Oh, no. Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks? Ah. Listen, listen here, Mr. Why are you Pers fiddlesticking? Pers Mr. <laughs> Persnickety? <laughs> we're not, we're bringing back the old. What old? So Fiddles what are you, your frustration is that you, you tried to snap these? Uh, no, my frustration is that I pushed a button and now I have six consoles oh. and they're all freaking out. Oh, it's out. all you. <laughs> I thought you were fiddlesticking oh. me. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, man, you're in blue water. You, yeah. you, you're. This like, is life. This should be. Me? This should be easy <laughs> for you, right? Yeah. Oh, Jason, I'm just, can you hear me? I can. Let me. I'm uh, not across SBL, am I? Yep. Nope. All right. So we turn in. Yep. Uh, ninety. When we don't it doesn't huh? necessarily have to be ninety. We could save a little time by doing what Johan just proposed. Well, but yeah, I, I'd like to. I'd like to actually make this a. I'd like to make this yeah. a valid survey line, because we can. This will be usable data as we do this cross. So don't turn too fast. Well, you can turn fast, uh, but once we get pointed, then we're gonna just do a straight line. Oh. So, you, would you rather not turn fast, or do you want to turn fast? <laughs> That's. The yeah, you can. Question. No, you can. You can turn. You can just turn to the target. We don't need to survey on the turn. All right. Here we go. Bridge, bridge now. I'll go moderate. Moderate speed. Hi, are you guys all set with your heading change? Wait a second. I'm, I'm doing a 90. Okay. Dr. Delgado, we got your message. We're going to send you um, a message through the science link there. Give us just a second to communicate that. Okay, the bridge is ready for our next move. Once we are. Ah. Roger. Thank you, thank you, Dave. Uh, Nautilus and Shore, this is Hans on SDL and Shore. Welcome. Hey, Han Yay. Hans, we hear you loud and clear. Hi. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Hans, have you been following along so you, you're up to speed on where we are? You need an update? Oh. 
Roger. Hi, this is Mike Brennan on shore. Can you guys hear me? Hey, Mike. Hi, Mike. Okay, so you're turning. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Are they happy? You can make your move if you want. So it sounds like, uh, so we can hear Phil, we can hear Mike Brennan, but we're not hearing Jim Delgado potentially. If, if Pete, that's just feedback for you. Yeah, they're 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 learning the system. Okay. They're they're on there. It's just. Uh, okay. Just getting familiar. All right. No sweat. Roger. Thank you, Nautilus. This is Hans on SDL on shore. Glad to be a part of the mission today. I know that the main body is separate from the bow. Uh, very large sections of main body conning tower with the deck rear deck done and the bow is separate, and also that the waterproof hangar is separated from the main body and uh, is in the vicinity. Thanks, Hans. We're seeing, so we're, we're currently conducting the uh, multi-beam survey. We've got, looks like the main, well, I don't know. That's interesting. Uh, I'll, let me ask Johan when he gets a second. Johan, do you have a length of the current target? Do we know which of the pieces we have uh, surveyed or found? That looks a lot like the stern up to just forward of the conning, conning tower. tower to me. Yeah, yeah, it looks approximately 100 meters long. So three, uh, this is our 300 foot target. Okay, copy. All right, so we have found the main body uh, and we were gonna make another pass along to insonify the Okay, and we're off the races here? Uh, yep. And then our our plan is to ten degrees to begin imaging. Go down after we complete this survey and begin imaging this section. And because we have a shorter dive today, uh, once we're done with the imaging at this location, we'll go search for the others uh, and then call it as soon as we run out of time. We're we're going to be done today. Back on deck at I guess leave bottom. Uh, 1330 uh, Hawaiian time. Uh, I got it. I, I think you're at the end of your step. tether. Yeah. yeah. Can you come down? All right. Coming down. Let's see if we can. I got to do a side move here. See if I can do this. Looks like you're still moving south. Yeah, so unfortunately, the stick has an offset in it, and so uh, if it's if it's moved just just a hair, it won't take the steps. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty annoying. How do I? <laughs> I have to re-zero it. But it has it has two sticky points in this <laughs> stick, like just barely, like because a lot of times when they're doing the the pre-launch, he'll say the thruster's still moving. Mm -hmm. It's because there's just a tad one step in the lateral. But if that's in there, then that doesn't take the step moves. Yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's always nice. <laughs> okay, so Atalanta is starting to move. You're coming up. Jim, we hear you. Appreciate uh, the attempt. Sorry we didn't make the connection, but it sounds like we have Mike 
and uh, Hans backing us up. So uh, thank you, thank you for attempting. All right. Copy that, Nautilus. Oh. Thank you. How? I'm, I'm, I have to get back under. We're stretched out, so it's not going to be pretty. Okay, what kind of space do we want between the line there? I guess that's more. How much did you move over? Uh, pardon, say that again. What was the ship move from that line over here? How far? Or that line? We've gone line? 35 so far. What did you, what, you? This is the goal? Uh, that's roughly where I marked the edge of okay. the sub, maybe. But that was just a loose point. Uh, we're tracking a line, and we can probably see on Chris's survey better when we're. But what was the what was the spacing we were going between the two passes? You'd made one pass this way. You made a ninety, and then you told the ship to move over. How far? Uh, we're just tracking a line. I haven't set a oh. distance. Okay, so I, that's a Chris question then. Yeah. Right? What, what is he on? Data? Yep. Where do I find him? Data. Okay. I think he's just having a side conversation. Oh. Talking to Rennie. Oh, I was just wondering how far between the lines there we want to go. We tracked the one line down that side. Okay. So that ship move has been about 55. So it doesn't look like, well, 60 is not going to be enough. Then. Yeah. Well, what about from my line, 60 over? Right. That should be about it. So where you get X marks the spot, that's where we're going. Sounds good. So we're level with the ship now.
I'll probably tell Atalanta to stop in just a second. Yep. Bridge, bridge now. Please hold position. Thank you. All right, well, I'm going to start making the 90. Sounds good. Gotta have a description. So our coordinates were spot on today. We got exactly where we needed to be. We're using our mapping system right now to map the ocean floor, looking for uh, any hazards that could be in our way. Um, also just trying to plot the best way that we're going to come in to start the photogrammetry and the MRSA film capture. So this is part of our first shift process, this patience of waiting and seeing yeah, yeah, once we get all the work we done. Do. Set yep. the, just the team up for success. Yeah. Uh, for Johan and for Chris in the lab, uh, I've been, I shared the screenshot of the Norbit survey with the scientists ashore, which is really helpful. So if we keep those coming as we get new perspectives or um, better resolution in the map, that would be appreciated. All right, we all set? Yeah, I'd like to reset your DVL again before we get moving. And then, okay. um, Johan, Hans notes that 200, the debris field is 250 meters, 250 meters to 10 degrees field. to port. Okay. So the separation between the hull, main hull and the bow are 250 meters. And they should, there should be a trail of debris between the two. Oh, I so didn't do anything. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was coming to the end there. So yeah, it's, it's wobbling a little bit just cause it, you know, it's settling out. So. Okay, so that was, uh, that would be three, four, five. Really? 
bridge, bridge oh, yeah, now. Three, five, five. We were 165 on the way down. Um, Can you please track a line forwards at 165? Wait, what? Wait. Copy, what? thank you. 165. Pardon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> bridge, bridge <laughs> now. <laughs> we have your bag. You'll Sorry, that worry. was a mistake. Uh, can you track a line at 345? <laughs> It's a good Perfect, thing thank you. Attention. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for catching that, everyone. <laughs> it's that extra half hour early on the shift. It is. Okay, that was your 10 degrees to port, by the way. Johan, what do you think this line's going to take? Um, it'll be, we'll be going about another. Sorry, I got to zoom out. Uh, 150 meters ish. So. Sixteen minutes. Okay. So for for our participants ashore, uh, folks, you need to take a break, stretch your legs. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're getting there. We're getting we there. Are, uh, yeah, we're probably twenty twenty five minutes from being on the bottom, starting this photo survey. This is Hans. I've got coffee. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only get resupplied with snacks here in the van on that afternoon shift um, when yeah. Dr. Ballard brings the tray yeah. of cookies or treats up for everybody. I still have that Oreo. Oh, <laughs> cookie hour was good. Chris, are you in a position where you can explain to our audience the importance of the mapping and, and just how the system is working for us? Yeah, give me, let's give it just a minute to get this line started and then. Absolutely, yeah. no problem. just quite impressive with uh, everything that Chris has been able to put together to make this programming work and really give us this uh, this view of the seafloor and what's protruding or the canyons that we've been able to find and then right down to those centimeters the fissures literally in the, in centimeters the, yeah the it's been it incredible yep and I love to hear him explain it because it, he does it so well there is a I really like this expedition because we are pushing the technology. So we've got these camera tools that now I think everybody on board is like, boy, that's helpful. Or that's yeah. really an interesting perspective or something that we've never been able to share before. And a bit with the Norbit, we we're finding that we've used this tool before, but never as part of the must have workflow of our exploration. And I it's think really we're, aided. We're really finding that it's yeah, very, it's very helpful yesterday. I mean, the, yesterday, if you're tuned into the tail end of the the dive, we had a little bit extra time after we finished the the sub photogrammetry. So there was a few small targets uh, in the vicinity that we had identified on the multi-beam survey, and so we be bopped over to check them out in the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Sure enough, there's a there's a what looked to be a Mark 27 practice torpedo. Oh wow! Intact, laying on the seafloor. Just, so just speaking of which, there's there's something off there to port. Somebody hanging out over there. Yep. So there was a description of the anti-aircraft gun that was sitting upright on the seabed. So maybe that could be one too. 
So you said fully intact, just laying there on the bottom of the ocean floor. It just without the insight that the Norbit provided, right. we would kind of blindly pick a grid and fly and, that. Yep. But the it we, showed up there on that. On we just that. went right to it. Jonathan yep. this morning just produced the model of that, and maybe we can share that even with the team uh, ashore for their. Yeah, it really has been incredible to have this extra footage to just kind of get the get the imagery out there to know what it is that we're looking at, what we're looking for, and which direction, which angle to come in on with Hercules when we get ready to do the the imagery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it really saves a lot of time and um, just puts us right on the mark, right where we need to be. All right, if you guys are ready now, I, I think we're stabilized down here. I can give you a quick overview. It's awesome, yes, go for it. Yeah, so what we're seeing here um, oh, I guess you guys can't actually see the uh, the screen right now because I guess we're not live streaming. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not but yeah, basically but the general the concepts. the Norbit system or the, the yeah the the Hercules mapping system gives us a um, gives us a basically a large overview of the site. Right when we're actually on the sea floor, we can only see about um, maybe 10 meters at most. So with the Norbit system, we can actually see out to, right now I think we're seeing a swath width of a, about 220 meters, something like that. So it's really just another complete, uh, it's just another complete realm of visual range, right? So um, by doing these quick overview passes, we can really sort of dial in on targets that we want to see. Um, much further than we would, and do it in a very, relatively short amount of time compared to what we would have to do for a, a traditional visual search. Thanks, Chris. Would those practice torpedoes be potentially live? Uh, so we really need to get folks who are knowledgeable about this as opinion, but I said practice because the nose of the torpedo is painted yellow, visibly yellow, and that's a very common indication for practice torpedo. So it would have had like propellant and the fuels associated with it, but maybe not the explosive, the bang part. Copy that. Uh, but I don't know in World War II what the protocol specifically was, and in our kind of hasty search last night, it wasn't apparent that, that yellow meant safe guaranteed, so we... <laughs> We did a little pirouette around it, and we're so close to the end of the expedition, I didn't want to have any drama, so <laughs> we archived those photos and boogied out of there. That would not, that we don't want to end with a bang. So yeah, literally, speak. yeah, that would be, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the practice artillery yeah, rounds are blue, probably. right? Well, may, yeah, maybe Hans has a, some insight. We can, yeah. we can get that rip model and those photos out to you too, Hans. Yeah, no, this is Hans ashore. I would probably say you're right. Treat everything as potentially live. You know? <laughs> so we can interact with it. Hans, maybe yesterday, if you remember yesterday the, at the 201, the, there was the sinking, the scuttling of that sub was uh, during a torpedo exercise with the Queenfish, I believe, uh, was and there's a YouTube video of the actual uh, torpedo shot from the Queenfish. But we had a debate last night. It, it described that the, the 201 was sunk by just one torpedo from the Queenfish. But we debated if maybe they shot a couple of practice torpedoes at it as, a, as an actual target before they decided to fire a live torpedo and they had the, you know, the everything calibrated and the sights all tuned in. I don't know if, if that sounds like a sounded like a reasonable because it was right near right near the uh the rec site i have someone already asking if that that model is going to be up on sketchfab yeah 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 I, the when, torpedo when uh captain camera gets back in the seat we'll <laughs> have to make sure we'll it gets on to upload it. we've got quite a collection that we've been able to put together for this for this pro we have to get quinlan down there to print it out yeah, too yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great question. This is Hans. So now that we've got, you know, the better imagery of it, it could be identified as 
may be associated with the era with that time frame and that's a possibility um you know otherwise it's hard to say when you come across ordinance like that and uxo which is in a lot of different areas around the island uh, whether it's necessarily all from the same event i don't know great question i i love that uh not us live and spl are a safe space to speculate on these sorts of things you know because we're there's no claim of being at least the this group here experts but we you not know we by have any like means, a, we have no. a, maybe the our knowledge together yeah we could come the up resources with to find <laughs> it and, and to know how to use those resources for sure this is just this whole expedition has just been uh i've literally been the sea sponge absorbing all of the information possible because it's just it's incredible how much i've learned being out here such a wonderful opportunity i would agree it's, it's wonderful to rely on the outreach to the public and the experts out there and i've learned to have a thick skin and understand that there's always someone that knows a lot more than i do and they may be listening couldn't agree more with that that's one of the things that I teach my students back in the classroom is learning that collaboration and communication. It's not just about the talking, but also about the listening and the willingness to learn. So All right, so maybe 10 more minutes of this uh, survey, and then we will get to the bottom and start our assessment. And there is literally enough time on the clock that we're going to get to be a part of that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute, this watch has a couple more hours to go, right? Yes, we do. We, do. we, we have uh, uh, because the data processing load is so big for the model making Forward? and the immersive content. We've really dedicated the, the yeah, nights to I think we're data processing, separating that way, so and the days yeah, to uh, you can turn ROV dives. And so our eight to twelve our shift tracks are separating some. Has been the delivery team. Yes, <laughs> we have been. So I would. Say the ship needs to adjust a little bit. Setting everybody else, the other and ships up. The, the four to eight has been, they've had a little bit of time on the bottom, but they've also had the coming homes. Yeah. 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 